Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here. Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. I thought I'd try something that no one else really decides to use and it's this Group 2 car here, the Petronas Toms SC430 by Lexus. Now this thing cost 800,000 credits, so probably not the wisest investment in the world if this, if this thing is, you know, a bag of rubbish, but we're going to try it anyway. So we're going to jump straight into qualifying and you can see my best time is a 129.553 in the Nissan GTR. So let's see what we can do in this thing. So I'm going to go over this lap. So you can see the breaking point here is just before this kerb, but you actually do it a lot early in this car just to make the corner. So usually the breaking point is just before the kerb, but in this thing I have to break a little bit earlier. Keep it nice and tight through turn one and a smooth exit and then go through turn two, which really with you isn't a corner at all if we're being completely frank so through this left hander called the coca-cola corner you'll see the 50 meter uh, board on the right hand side break just before that on it and then fling it to the left hand side making sure you do not go two wheels over the curb otherwise you will give yourself a penalty so this is turn five then this is called actually just 100r um so yeah, not 130, just 100 R. And then left hand corner here, again, before the 50 meter board. If you break at the 50 meter board, you're breaking way too late. You need to make sure that you get the car on the left hand side, over the kerbs, on the left. Uh, try and make the car as straight as possible. If you put the power down too early like I just did there, the rear end kind of sticks out and yeah, you lose a little bit of time. So this is 300 R, just this little corner here, turn nine. And then massive break point is just after the Dunlop corner. Keep it nice and tight through turn 10. Set yourself up through turn 11 and a nice smooth exit through turn 12, set ourselves up for turn 13, then you see there's a little line on the left hand side, you're going to break at that point in there, again over the kerb on the right hand side, two wheels on the kerb on the left hand side here just to keep the car as straight as you possibly can, break point here and through the right hander as well, I don't really, really recommend it too much because to be honest with you, it is without a doubt my, my weakest set of corners in this game, I, just, I can never quite get it right, I know the angle you need to get the car so you can get a nice you know, smooth, straight exit all the way to the finish line, but I just can't seem to nail it. But um, yeah, that was a 31.2, which is not particularly great, but I managed to go again, just tidy a thing up, do exactly what I needed to do, and I managed to set myself a 130.3. So about eight tips off uh, the Nissan GTR. So not the best thing in the world, but still, I entered a race, and yeah, I should have really taken that as a. Uh, you know, a bad omen, <laughs> but regardless, I, I'll crack on and jump into another race anyways. Now, I'm on my second account for this one, because I thought if I do it on my main account, um, it's quite highly rated these days, it's 62,000 uh, DR, so I'll be starting like third or fourth and it just wouldn't go anywhere, so I really want to test this car. So I'm on a second account, which is still an A-rated account, um, unfortunately the SR was not S-rated, so it's not the highest ranked lobby in the world, but there's still A and B drivers in it, so this will be a good test to see how well this thing does in race conditions, because in qualifying, it's not the quickest, far from it, but maybe in the race, maybe in the race, people, this thing might be decent. So around Fuji, once more, as we get underway. So what do you need to know about this circuit, then? Well, straight away, it's... Bad on tyres, and the tyre wear for Daily Race C this week, which is this race, is quite high. So we get a lovely slipstream going on the back of this Lexus here, um, but as soon as we pull over to the right-hand side, slipstream's gone, and then we lose it again. So we're going to go back into the slipstream once more. Could we potentially get a move on the inside here? No, nothing too dramatic. Just want to keep it nice and steady for the first lap. Now, I can see it's going to swipe across, but I just avoided and reacted to it. Now, some guy's gone off. This guy's completely and utterly spun out. So we've gone up two positions already through two corners so I, I will certainly take that so breaking it after the cones now I've left the cones on here again folks just in case you do want to see the differences between my breaking point and the others now this guy the Brit in front of me just starts to go wide so I sneak up the inside here a little bit of a tap but nothing too uh, dramatic he does try and reply but thankfully I just cut um, cut the corner off there and you can see the German completely went off the track and that's gave me another position now so we're up to 15th place this guy's got a penalty in front of me I think there's a another gentleman um, who's got it as well so we break really really hard getting ourselves ready for Dunlop corner I was expecting a few more casualties uh, as we go through here turn 11 and 12 again I want to be squeaky clean I don't want to do anything wrong in this race because I want to get that that SR rating back up to where it deserves to be so yeah going through turn 14 and turn 15 here this is called Nets corner um, this up left hander, um, which is quite interesting to know because I never knew the corners of the track until I uh, went on Google. So there's two people in front of us who got penalties. So as soon as they serve them, we are going to jump ourselves up to 13th place. So we'll be one lap in and we will have gained six positions. So not too shabby. So as I was saying at the start of this race, 
it's all about saving your tyre wear because the tyre wear is quite high. You use the medium tyres. Surprisingly, there are no hard tyres. I know Gran Turismo really like hard tyres. You can see the guy behind me. And then he goes for a massive dive bomb, misses breaking point, and then he gets smashed into the back of me, but thankfully not. Spaniard comes on the track, slows down the Frenchman, I manage to gain in position. We go for the left-hander here, but I really don't fancy going side by side, so I back well out of it. That drops us down to P12, couldn't keep P11, but that's fine, that's fine, it doesn't matter. Right, going through 100R then, uh, I believe this is technically two corners, so this turn five now go up to turn six. Again, I like to keep to the left-hand side for a nice smooth flow and exit. I just make contact. Um, with the Frenchman behind me there. I don't think he quite saw that I was coming barging through, so apologies to him, a little bit of contact there, but hopefully, fingers crossed, that's the only thing we have to worry about. Now, the German is really, really trying to keep the Spaniard behind him here, so much so that they come together and he just outbreaks himself, or it could have been for the contact, to be fair, but that promotes me up to P10 now. So this is going swimmingly well, which is exactly what we want to see as we go through turn 13, turn 14 here, and then a nice smooth exit potentially through turn 15. I took a little bit of too much curb there, I feel, but we're all good, we're okay, okay. Now this corner here, turn 16, is called Panasonic Corner. So if that's a sponsored corner, if I've ever seen one. But anyway, this guy gets all sorts of out of shape here. Now this would be a good test to see just how quick this car is on this straight. So we've managed to overtake him here, but are we gonna be able to keep that position? Is he gonna make a, a massive gain on us? So we go across the line, 34.5 or six, you say, not really fantastic. But it's good to see that the Nissan GTR didn't actually gain any time on me there. Now he goes for a switch back here, and it is a incredible move. I mean, what a move by the Spaniard there. That was fantastic. That was absolutely brilliant. I thoroughly suggest you go back and watch that again, if you can. Um, brilliant, brilliant. Unfortunately, though, he undoes it all, because uh, he goes through uh, Coca-Cola Corner. He cuts the um, cuts him to the apex and gets himself a one second penalty. So yes, unfortunately we got kind of barged off um, and then we dropped down to P11, but it doesn't matter uh, as a guy got a penalty and we drop up to P9 now. So three laps in, just about to cross the line um, and we decide not to actually because we're gonna skip ahead. So, <laughs> so we skipped ahead to lap four now. You can see there's a trail of cars in front of me here. Again, this is a good indication of how well this car copes in the slipstream. You see P7 has served a penalty there, so it's going to drop him back. But in the slipstream here, it seems to just lack top end. Now, when you buy this car, in the description, it says it won the 2008 championship purely due to its basically high speed. We go for a massive move up the inside. That was, that was perfect. Literally perfect. That was so good. I'm very, very happy with that move. Time that to perfection. Exactly what you want. The guy didn't even see me coming. Thankfully, he gave me the space. Shot up to P7. Lovely stuff. So we move ahead to lap five then, going through turn 11 and 12 once more. Getting really, really close to the, is it the Hungarian, I believe? Garrett GT44 in the Lexus. Uh, brave choice, you can go for the Nissan GTR, which is the, the go-to. You do have the choice of the Lexus, which to be fair, I really like as I get all sorts of that shape there. Way too much oversteer, tire wear. Starting to kick in a little bit there. If anyone is wondering, I've got brake bias on zero. So you've got the Lexus. Uh, you've got the Raybrig NSX as well, which is what I used on my live stream on Monday. Uh, good car, the NSX, actually. No issues with it whatsoever. Just make sure you change the brake bias to the front because the uh, it's an MR car, so you need to look after those rears as much as you possibly can. So we get nice and close to uh, the pack up ahead here. So we've got we've got Hungarian, uh, a German, and I just can't see it. I think it's another German. So we're going purple uh, through the first sector here. So that goes to, goes to show how strong we are. Uh, in the slipstream through that first sector. Now the Lexus is going to go wide and so is the German. Now I sneak up the inside here, um, but I just couldn't quite get it done because the next corner is a left-hander. Just outbreak the Hungarian on the left-hand side. And that's a nice little move up the inside. Um, and we move ourselves up to P6. That's called the hairpin corner, by the way. So yeah, I just, I don't imagine that's the name. I think it's just called hairpin, but there you go. Anyways, this guy breaks and then move over to the left-hand side. So I end up smashing into the back of him. And unfortunately, because of that, I lose a position to uh, Gara GT44 in the Lexus. A little bit annoyed by that. He breaks and then move over to where I was. He should have stayed where he was, really. And um, yeah, unfortunately, that's not gonna, that's not going to be the only incident we have with the German in this race. So stay tuned. You're going to see what happens further on. Okay, the Hungarian here uh, goes wide, and I can just get my position back now. He tries to defend it, but the old switchback worked an absolute treat there. He just outbreaked himself. Switchback worked a treat. 
and your boy's now up to P6. Okay, so now we're on to lap 8. You see the German? He's indicating, say, look, you can go past, I'm going to stick to the left-hand side. But watch what he does here. I'm braking, and he turns in and... Yeah, and then I just lose the rear end. Now, I don't know... I've looked back, to this, looked back at this several times. Now, I don't know if he meant to do that, but he turned in very early. Very, very early. And after a while, I'm starting to think he did do that, because he was swerving all over the place on lap 9 now as I go to overtake him here. Uh, and I've made got the move done, so I'm just going to go around the outside. Now, it goes side by side, but look at this. It just swipes across and hits me. I d I d and I don't know why. I genuinely, genuinely do not know why. I've been super squeaky clean with this guy. I've not touched him. I've not touched this guy, so I don't know what his his beef was. I don't know why he had something against me. Um, maybe he was just jealous of the car. <laughs> Who knows? And then look at that there. Um, completely cuts me off, so I've got absolutely nowhere to go. And I could see through that corner. I thought he's just going to fly through there. And if I go for a move, he's going to just swipe me off. And again, see, he's just, it's just not clean. And I'm just really cautious because, like I said, I don't want to be ASR anymore. I want to be SSR. So we may just make a, a smashing move. Uh, down the inside. Also, I want to apologise, guys, if if the video's skipping ever so slightly. Um, I am in conversations with Al Gatto to figure out why this is doing this, but it's it's not going particularly well so far, if I'm being completely frank. So apologies if the odd frame is skipped. But anyways, we're going to skip ahead now. So I decided on lap 11, because there was quite a bit of a gap behind me and in front of me, I thought, you know what, let's just go on the pits. Let's go in the pits. Put some new, fresh, medium tyres on. It's the only choice we have. And let's go for the fastest lap, shall we? So as we come out the pits here, we're going to see we're just about going to get ahead. Now, the German has another swipe at me. He's desperately trying to stop me um, to go in front of him. But unfortunately, he's just run out of time and run out of talent. And I've decided to overtake him. And that is P5 in the bag. So let's go and start our fastest lap. So we're on lap 13, the final lap. Let's see what we can do in this Lexus. So braking well after the cones, just before the kerb on the left-hand side. Again, keeping it tight through turn one. Uh, I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce the name of that corner. It's unreal. Again, turn two. Again, we'll just take the references from the little guy we had earlier. Just before the 50-meter board, fling it to the left-hand side. We're purple in the first sector without the slipstream. So it goes to show um, how much quicker we can be when we've got the clean air. Fifth gear, and then as we go through turn five, drop it down to fourth braking after the cones there again two wheels over the curb that's exactly what you need to do eke the power down don't fully just plant it otherwise the rear end's going to step out even with fresh tires on absolutely pointless turn nine then 300 r this corner here and once more braking after the dunlop corner so we're four temps up now on the fastest lap so this is looking pretty tasty but again you get another skip frame so i do apologize guys it's uh, frustrating as hell because i love recording these videos in such high quality but you know, El Gato saying 4K is flawless on their hardware. I don't think so. Don't think so. A little bit frustrating. Anyways, going through turn five, Nets uh, 15, I should say, Nets corner. Uh, not too shabby, not too shabby. And then turn 16, probably braked a little bit too early. And then, um, yeah, didn't I couldn't get my car in the right position to just absolutely nail it by the time we're coming out of turn 16. Um, but it wasn't disastrous. So we're going to cross the line here. Are we going to get fastest lap before we end the race and the video? Yes, we get a 31.0, not too shabby. So, overall, I don't think the car's bad, but if you're struck for money, do not buy this car. It is not worth the 800,000 credits. Just get the GTR or anything like that. It's just not worth it. But it was fun to try it, and I'm glad I tried it. It's I can see why no one uses it now. Just pointless. Utterly, utterly pointless. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Something a little bit different. I wanted to try something, you know, a different car, but uh, if you did enjoy it, please leave a like. Um, subscribe if you are new around here and I'll, uh, I'll catch you for the next one. Take care. Ta-da.